Um, and so now let's switch to our next session. Uh, through the course of the morning's discussion, we've heard how network is becoming a significant piece of the overall power consumption and the need to focus on innovation in that space. Um, and that's going to be a uh, part of the thrust of our next uh, session. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Surendra Anubolu, uh, who's a distinguished engineer in the Broadcom uh, uh, switching group. And um, I and I want to hand it off to Surendra uh, for a session, which is going to be titled Energy Efficient Training Fabric. You're muted, uh, Surendra. Thank you, Bharat. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Thank you for the introduction. And I'm very glad to be here today. Uh, energy efficiency is something that's very close to my heart. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the power, okay, let me share the slides. So hopefully that will come out all right. Okay. okay. Uh, I hope the slides came out okay. Okay, great. So uh, energy efficiency is something that's close to my heart and I'm glad that uh, you're here, uh, I'm part of this. So I'm going to, I think we are already a uh, little bit running late on the time. I'll try to make up, um, make up some of the time at the last. I'm not going to be talking about general compute or anything. I'm going to be focusing on the AI and this is redundant. I was uh, hoping to make a case that, okay, the number, the number of parameters are growing and the fabric is growing. I think that case is already made earlier by multiple people. Let me skip over that. And then uh, I want to talk about like, I think this is also made earlier, which is that the training cluster sales size, Rob actually shared very good data saying that, okay, is that two K nodes and is going to four K nodes. I'm, I'm looking at the ML comments and uh, ML comments uh, shows that okay, a lot of benchmarks that are submitted today. The, the number of node count is growing and the amount of performance improvement is huge. Like I, I see like in a matter of six months, there's like a over 2X, I think uh, Rob was talking about actually uh, 2X imp uh, improvement in every few months. I see that the number of nodes 4K is already submitted, few of them are there. Why is that important? Because if the number of the cluster sizes continues to grow and the bandwidth continues to grow, your network plays increasing, increasing role. So the other one is, okay, we know that the cluster size is growing. How about the bandwidth? Or how much bandwidth do you need? The, as, as, you, as you saw earlier, the parameter size are growing so much, the amount of data task is also a lot. And a, a part of it is like, let's say, if you look at relatively the memory bandwidth that is there, HPM3 has four, ter four terabits per second for the chip lag. And if you, have, if you have like a six or eight of them, you, you're talking about 32 terabits on a one single node. So when I get opportunity to talk to the consumers, right? Like, like how much fabric bandwidth do you need? How much do you need it in the future? Typical answer I get is like whatever they have right now is not enough. So right now a lot of people are using 200 gig. That's not sufficient. And few people are actually moving to 800 gig that's under construction. And even that is expected that in a few years, that's not going to be enough. If you're looking at a few generation down the line, it's going to be terabits per second per node the amount of bandwidth is coming out of each of the AI or GPU uh, accelerator node. So now we are talking about a combination of very large amount of bandwidth and very large number of nodes, and you can see what is happening, right? So, and then the other thing I want to show here is that you are, the amount of power, uh, the, the importance of the network grows beyond certain size. If you just have one node, okay, there's nothing, there's no interconnect, right? But if you have, few of them, maybe like four or eight of them, you're just connecting them on the board. So it is, it becomes, it, it does consume power, but it's not as, if you look at 500 watts per node, and then you're, you're looking at your IO uh, bandwidth, uh, IO power, it's still not significant. But once you start getting out of the box, now you have single stage fabric or multi-stage fabric. Even at the four K nodes right now, you need a multi-stage fabric actually. And as you keep increasing the number of nodes, you need a very efficient, training network, power efficient uh, training network. The network share is, does not linearly grow as you increase the number of nodes. Actually, it's, it's, it's more than linear. So as you increase the bandwidth and as you increase the number of nodes, the share of the network power, I think Catherine also was sharing uh, that uh, okay, the uh, expected share of the network power is going to grow. But actually, I'm actually of the opinion that 
it is uh, probably very likely to be more than what was shown, shown there. That as the as you grow to 64k nodes or larger nodes, the amount of the bandwidth that you need, the power is going to be very high in the network. Okay, so let's say we uh, let's say we agree on that, and then uh, and then the next one I want to show here is that. So when you, uh, the fabric is important, but also you need to understand what kind of a transfers are going on. So if you, uh, if you look at all reduce versus all to all, the type of network traffic and the, and the uh, way the data is exchanged is different. And it becomes important to the fabric because when you are building a multi-stage fabric, like how much bandwidth do you need at each stage? So yeah, sure, like maybe within, the, within a UBB or within a uh, baseboard, you have a full connectivity or mesh connectivity. As you go up, you're likely to go for a, a low subscription. And that depends on what kind of a load you're running, what, what is the demand for your network, and what is the demand uh, from the AI nodes that are coming through. I, I put some uh, range of numbers here. Uh, this is important from two perspectives. One is when you are uh, building a network for the AI, or when you're uh, architecting a system, saying that, okay, this is how I'm going to divide the job. And also when you are uh, programming and like saying that, okay, how much energy does it take when you want to move a piece of information from place to place? I'll quickly go over here. So you're, you're going all the way from on the die, which is 0 0.05 picojoules to the inter die, which is like a chiplets. And then the HPM, HPM actually takes a little more than the inter die interconnect, the chiplet interconnect for a few technical reasons. And then you're getting onto the board and you're getting onto the copper cables. They're all in the two to five picojoules per bed. And then you get onto the, uh, onto the optics at the end. So right now the optics do get used, like 800 gig optics are used, or 400 gig optics are used. They are in the 20 picojoules per bed, right? So the amount of energy that you're spending grows a lot as the distance grows. And the distance has to grow because your network, your cluster size is growing. When you have 4K or 64K nodes, like, your, uh, like as we heard earlier, right? That, it just takes the entire warehouse uh, and entire data center to build uh, to uh, to house all of them. The interconnect distance are long, so there's a the, one of the sweet spots that I see here is the co-packaged optics when the distance get large. This is typically true at higher tiers. It may not be at the first tier or second tier, but as you go higher, uh, then you need a longer distance cable. So when you get a longer distance, co-packaged optics uh, definitely uh, shows very significant promise in, in terms of saving the power. So, okay, I'll just, uh, so, so basically the, the takeaway from here is you need to construct your network so that you're making the best use, right? It's like you're you're using the best interconnect and also you're moving the data into the locally. Uh, so then I, I have a slide here that uh, just shows the, um, uh, showing the switch energy consumption. So switches are normally, you know, Ethernet switches I'm talking about, probably true for any switch. There's a packet processing, there's a byte processing, and there's an interconnect. Packet processing uh, only gets activated once for every packet. So typically, if you have the AI workloads, which are very, very large, then your, your message size are large. So the packet size tend to be MTU, so like maybe 4K bytes or something. So that is actually shrinking. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the interconnect in the switch, the IO, the surge, that is the, the uh, that is the part that consumes most of the power, and you can do very little about it because it comes down to the physics. So, but the packet processing can be streamlined, the byte processing can be uh, slimmed down. But at the end, again, it comes to the surge that you are using to interconnect between the devices. The other one I want to share, which is uh, we actually run a uh, lab I, uh, where we have a relatively decent sized cluster. That actually uh, we work, uh, we work, we get the benchmarks and we run them. We we see how much data is being transferred and usable bandwidth. So realized bandwidth. So what I mean by the tip that is, you may have petabits of network, but doesn't mean you are actually getting petabits of uh, uh, bandwidth at, uh, for all the traffic patterns. One of the issue is the load balancing. The other issue is the condition control. So these are the areas to focus on. I think there's a uh, area of active research. I think. Um, um, and I'm looking forward to collaborate, uh, collaborate with others in the industry as well. Is the load balance and condition control are very important in getting the realized bandwidth. It's not, you may have any amount of bandwidth, you, you want to be able to get like 80, 90% of the utilization. And then of course, optimizing power flow, this is what I talked about earlier, being at uh, different levels. And the third one is energy proportionality. You definitely want to build energy proportionality and because of compute communication and there are many other factors that come in. In, in our lab, when we, uh, when we run these loads, we see that actually, uh, even though the network average network utilization is high, is definitely 20 to 30 percent 
uh, energy savings that you can achieve if you can build your network uh, components such that they're energy proportional. When I, say, when I say energy proportional, what I mean is if you have a, let's say, a terabit of bandwidth that's moving through a network that has a max capacity of terabit, if you're using only half of that at, for a short duration, let's say for a millisecond or a few microseconds, you should be able to, your network, your component should be able to respond to that and use less energy as well. And, and that may not help you with uh, your, uh, the amount of cooling that you need to build in, but it definitely helps you on the energy bill and the uh, and energy that's on your And here's another, another example is that you want to use higher radics as much as possible. Right? Like, so if you, like when you're building the network, like you can't get away from uh, requiring large amount of bandwidth at each of the tiers. Uh, the more wires that you have, like the, here's an example, let's say if you have a 12.8 terabits per second switch, let's say if you want to, if you need a 25, you need to put six chips together and it consumes a lot of power, right? I think at OCP, we had that uh, 25 tether switch and you want to use something that's like high radix. So my, my point is, try to use a high radix. Uh, of course, a pipe bandwidth is important. Let's say between 400 gig and 800 gig, going to 800 gig makes it easier to do load balance. But at the same time, uh, but at the same time, if you reduce the radix, uh, then you need more number of hops, which consumes more energy. So with that, I want to, I have a few takeaways I want you guys to have. One is, one is that I think first point, that doesn't need any repetition. It's uh, the, we need more, uh, Bandwidth and the second one is also well established that the energy share of the network is growing much faster. Then I would like you guys to think about collapsing the tiers that results in large power savings. And then you want to use the right interconnectivity every stage. Like you don't want to be spending more energy on the places. Uh, and also you want to use enough amount of bandwidth. You want to leverage the data locality. And uh, the, la the last one is that, uh, another, which has a significant impact is the should look for an energy proportion network, building energy proportion network that actually responds to uh, dynamically to the amount of uh, data that's flowing through at a fine granularity actually, not at a gross granularity. Okay, so that's all I have. I think uh, that's all I have. And uh, I have my email address there. If you guys, uh, I'm looking to collaborate. I'm looking to look for ways where we could, uh, like there is, what I, find, what I find is there's expertise of AI and networking. And even in many companies, the network group and AI groups tend to be different. I think there's a amount of sharing in terms of the bandwidth, in terms of the network traffic patterns and core design would also, act, uh, I believe it would help. Okay. So I think, yeah, I think I, uh, that's all I have for today. Any questions I can, I can take if there are any. So there's no questions in the chat, but maybe a question that I think we have chatted about in the past, Surendra, that I know you, uh, dig deeper into in terms of workloads and traces and how uh, that maps into some of the challenges that we are facing forward. Uh, perhaps that is something you could uh, talk about a little bit more. Oh, yes. Yes. So like, let's say ML Commons, right? ML Commons uh, is one of the places I see a lot of benchmarks being posted, but th those are the, they all require large number of GPUs, right? So Somebody who's building a network, I'm uh, like I'm, I'm focused on the uh, building training fabrics, right? So how do you optimize that? Like I know we are not supposed to, uh, we should not be optimizing for a given benchmark or anything like that. But still, there's an understanding that's needed. Okay, the length of the transfers, how the uh, how, how the interconnect is working, how it's behaving. We need to model it and we need to simulate it. We need to optimize it. Or at least the trends that are happening. So I see. I, I think it is important that we establish metrics. And we establish uh, benchmarks that are training network, training fabric focused as well, not just at the overall endpoint. Because when you say endpoint, how many of us can actually run a 4,000 instance uh, benchmark and then actually get uh, and replicate that on a network repeatedly, right? But for me, I can't. Like, it's not easy for me. Like, I have a lab, I have, uh, we have like large number of switches, we have a fabric that we test. So, translating that these high level benchmarks into a way where it can be used to uh, uh, to see to see the network behavior, to get the better load balancing and better condition control in these things is important. So that, that's the area that I'm, I'm looking for uh, information and collaboration and, and in a way to translate this, uh, these benchmarks into something that is uh, network centric. Really, yeah, that's a key area going forward. Um, I don't see any further questions um, on the uh, chat too. Uh, so I want to thank you again, Surendra, uh, for uh, sharing your perspectives on the network side. I think uh, there's going to be more discussion on this front 
this afternoon as well in the session that uh, uh, Rob has focused on the interconnect. So I think this discussion will continue to be a big focus for the afternoon as well.